that, yeah. that's the way to I go. Agree. I've actually yeah, but, left the room. Yeah, but four, 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 four one is a is a thrashing, you know. Four one is like wow. That's painful. Yeah, it's painful. That is painful. We 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 got a red card as well. So oh, oh well. Like I say, these guys are getting paid anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter to them. They are. <laughs> they are getting paid. That's why I left the room and I came to, I came <laughs> here to join you guys. <laughs> like I need money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um I've just started recording guys, just to give you guys a heads up. And um please uh forgive my background. My usual place to have this meeting is occupied. They're having a different meeting there, so I had to move to my daughter's bedroom, which explains the cockpit behind me. Um, so uh, today, um, thanks a lot for the guys that have joined, by the way. Appreciate it. And thanks to the guys that are watching as well on our, on our YouTube channel. Um, so today, there's a few things that we just wanted to quickly touch up on and then also go through some of the questions that the guys are on the call may have. Um, so wanted to quickly speak about um, a topic that was requested from a, a, a different call and uh, a few people that have been contacting us. So one of them is um, buying your first property. So in terms of in in two parts how do you go about buying your first property what are the things that you need to look out for and also if you are going to be buying your first property what do you need to consider yeah so it's the process of how to do it and also if you're thinking about buying your first property what do you need to consider so those are the couple of things that i wanted us to quickly talk about and and then also go through some of the questions that the guys on the call may have but um what i'm actually gonna do i'm gonna change the format a little bit so firstly i want to go through the questions and then we can sort of discuss these topics afterwards so i know daniel has got questions if you want to sort of um ask your questions daniel and see if uh, if anyone can assist with that um the first question is that um you guys when you buy properties and renovate them do you have a list of tradesmen within your area whom you use or you do it yourself this is a perfect table question this one oh good Tavo? Uh, yeah. Um. So, uh, who we'll, we'll asked the question? Was it Dinio? Sorry. Dinio, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, so I, I think uh, the, the most important thing is to 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 find out the scope of the work, you know, because if it's a if it's a big big job, uh, I'll suggest uh, you use one person uh, who's gonna manage uh, just different uh, tradesmen who are coming in. But if, if it's a small job where it's only like you're doing a kitchen only and uh flooring you can find someone who does kitchens and also find someone who, uh, who does floorings in, in that way you're managing two people you know so but if it's a big big job you don't want to like uh going to look for an electrical person a plumbing person a joinery uh a, a kitchen feature flooring that you're gonna have like five to six uh different trades people to manage which can be a, a headache to you so most of the uh, the builders or the building uh, builders, uh, they've got their own people. So if you give a builder a job uh, to say, oh, can you do me a full refurb? Yeah, they will coach you and tell you like the things which they can't do. So if the things which they can't do, they'll bring in-house people. So for example, you can get a builder who can do everything, but obviously can't do electrical work, but they know someone who they work with to do electrical work. So when it comes to the stage of doing electrical work, full rewiring or something, they will get that electrician uh, to come in and the builder will put that on the price, you know? So uh, for, for, for the question, uh, what type of job were you looking uh, to do? No, I don't have any, but I was just thinking I should maybe, I should get the information before I start something. Okay. Yeah. No. So. So. There's. Uh. 
yeah so that's uh, that's how i would say that's the best way to approach it like uh it depends on the scope of work as well you know but like it's also good like in your area where you think you're going to be doing uh the deals and the, the projects uh to also to start looking around to see uh what the builders the builders in the area are saying you know well, what type of projects uh they're doing but uh usually with that approach as well like uh maybe if you want to buy a property like some builders don't like it like if people keep uh asking them to come in and scope the work before the property is there they actually own the property but you can actually maybe uh do it with one or two builders to actually see uh to get a feel of the prices so maybe if you can go to like a property which you're doing a viewing for even though you even you actually don't own it but yeah you tell the builder uh could he, you know what i've actually put an offer on this property i'm confident i'm gonna get it you know and they will come like thinking yeah that you're gonna get this property and you you can just ask for the court of this type of project and they'll give you a court and you ask another builder so you have two two rough courts uh to play around with but like for the next project if you call this obviously if you don't buy this one if you call the same builder they'll definitely not come because you didn't get the other court so it's like wasting their time basically so what other people actually do as well is to take uh, my videos like videos of the whole property and I sent to a builder to say look I know it to be time consuming for you to come to a project but I uh, can you just look at this uh this this the type of work which needs to be done is a b c d uh give me a, a rough number you know uh then obviously when I get the property I'll bring you in to actually have a physical look so in that way you know the rough number must not be uh plus or minus 10% So if the builder says you know what to do a complete refurb etc will cost you 10k so maybe if they come in and actually see it in person they're not going to say no this is now uh 20k or something because they, they would have actually seen uh the rough scope of the work you know mm -hmm. so you also filter in your numbers could you uh risk contingent risk uh to say okay cool uh, what if something goes wrong or what if when they start uh removing the flooring etc and they see something which you didn't uh, plan for so all that kind of stuff uh, you can factor in uh 10 or 15% for that okay thank you very much that was very very detailed um the i think the other question i wanted to ask is um do you guys refer to each other about uh the tradesmen or builders because the um i'm so scared of using builders especially if it is a job that uh requires a big chunk of money uh, because um, i i had an experience with a certain builder they came here and did the quotations and everything but uh, fortunately i was uh, i was very lucky because he was referred to this builder by a work colleague so we had jobs that were that that needed doing at the same time but the builder i put my job first but the builder chose the other my colleague over me and, and the, unfortunately on the other side and fortunately on my side the builder went bankrupt before finishing my my colleague's job so it was a big issue so how do you trust how do you know and how, how how do you pay them um so so yeah to be honest like I, I, i've been in a lot of property forums in a lot of property groups and uh builders are the big big problem you know but like the, the first first thing is about our relationships with them because uh builders are people as well you know so it's like uh, how have you approached them and uh where have you found them as well you know and uh so it, at the same time once you you write everything on paper like you can write like the stuff the builder can tell you oh, i'm going to do a b c but like mm. what i always advise people is to make sure you get even the smallest 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 detail on paper you know like get the smallest smallest detail on paper if they're going to paint the room how many coats are going to be painted all this kind of stuff it just mitigates um my arguments and the problems 
uh, when it comes to it, you know. Okay, thank you very much. Those are my my questions. Okay. Um, this time was still around. Yeah, hello. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, one minute. Um, so yeah, I think someone muted me, so I didn't answer the payment one. I I, I uh, did I did actually by mistake. That was me. <laughs> okay, yeah. So now then, in terms of uh, the payment plans, yeah, it, it also depends uh, on your builder, um, uh, Daniel. But like, other people like to give uh, a deposit, like which is maybe uh, ten or twenty percent to start off with. Mm -hmm. Then they agree a payment plan, just depending on how long your project is as well. Like let's say if it's a 12 week project, you can actually uh, pay the builder every two weeks on Friday on agreed scope of work being finished, you know? Or you can actually pay uh, the builders like 25% uh, at start, start of the project. Then after four weeks, you can do another 25% uh, just like that. But as you can see progress as well. So you just don't like, cause uh, that four weeks uh, has come, you just pay the builder. No, you wanna actually, uh, look at the progress, what they say they'll do, and what mm -hmm. they've actually achieved, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, until the end of the project. Because if you give everything at, at the first and the builder goes bankrupt, that's your mm -hmm. money gone as well, you know. So I, I think it's just uh, playing around with it. I've seen other builders who, who say they want 50% at the start of the project and mm -hmm. the other 50% at the end of the project. So mm -hmm. we which and they'll give you their reasons. So everyone will give you their reasons to say, you know what, I'll have 50% because I'll be having like other people I'm working with. So I need to pay them now. Or if you can, if you don't, if you can't do 50%, just pay me weekly every Friday because uh, I've got my people I'm working with, my tradesmen, I want to be paying them. And these guys, when they come to job after on Fridays, they want money. So I can hold off my payments until the end. So it's just building a relationship because as I mentioned, at the beginning, builders are people, you know, how they want to be paid and what's your scope of project. But mm -hmm. whatever you do, just make sure you write, write, write things down, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank no, you. No worries. Yeah, Muz, I'm going to drop off for five minutes. I need to drop off Google, then I'll jump back on, yeah? No problem. Thanks a lot for that, Abo. Okay. No worries, bye. Awesome, awesome. Um, thanks for bringing that to us, Dinue. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a question that a few people might actually find quite interesting. Um, whether you're starting out or you're already in the property industry, the, the issue of builders is, is a very common one. And um, just to sort of like continue on, on what Tabo mentioned, the really important bit that he talked about was creating relationships. At the end of the day, it is a people business creating the relationships with whoever it is that you're working with. Um, it's important to do your due diligence, obviously. Um, research on them, see what it is that they've done before. Don't go with the pictures and videos, obviously. See if you can actually reach out to the people that they've worked for, get reviews, and then get to know them. Test them out with smaller jobs, if possible, and see how they react in terms of time, in terms of the quality of the work, and then just get to know them um, yourself. Just get to know them and create a good relationship. I think that is 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 uh, the most important thing. At the end of the at the end of the day, like Tavo said, it is it is just another human being, and they would work well if you treat them like a human being, mm. rather than a transaction. Yeah. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Um, we've got a few more people that have joined. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of you guys one by one. It's gonna be uh, a while. So thanks a lot for joining. I am, however, really interested in saying hi to, to memory. Can you hear me? Memory, can you hear us? Right. Um, Hello, Mozi. Can you hear me? 
I can now. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Good. Sort of recovered. <laughs> recovered. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, the reason I pointed out memory is because there's a very interesting story that I need you guys to hear about. And uh, memory is, is, the, is the best person to tell the full story. So on the WhatsApp group that we've got for Zimbabwean property investors, we share quite a lot of information, guys. And um, uh, one of the things that we shared together with the Facebook group as well is a case um, where we had an interesting guest with one of our Zim property investors. And this investor is Memory, who is running a, a service accommodation in Northampton. Memory, would you like to tell us what happened? Memories muted. Can you Hello? Oh, can, there you just, can you just give me five to ten minutes? Then I'll explain. I'm just doing, I'm just finishing off something. No problem. No problem. Um, oh. we'll, we'll, we'll quickly move on to a different story. And when memory gets a second, we'll hear about it. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks, memory, in advance. So just to let you guys know, the guys that have just recently joined, um, there's, uh, there's two things okay, I that, wanted to that's speak fine. about. Thank you. Wanted to quickly talk about um, buying your first home. So this is, this is coming from a few conversations that we've had with people that are asking the question. So buying your first property. So firstly, the process of buying your first property, uh, what it is that you should expect. Now, a, a lot of people obviously have not gone through the process of purchasing a house and it's just vague information that we know about but there's a few considerations that a lot of people don't know about up until you get to it so just wanted to put it out there some of this will be very obvious to the guys that have been in the property industry for a, for a while uh, some of you guys have already been doing studies on property and you know you understand this stuff but after talking to a few people who are asking general question it it, it it looks like it's not, uh, it's obviously not uh, common knowledge. So we just wanted to quickly talk about it now. And if there's anyone of you guys who want to know a little bit more, feel free to shout. And if you're watching on our channel and you want to know a bit more, just feel free to reach out to us. So, so firstly, buying your first home, um, the, the, the things that you want to know about is, um, the, the first question is how much do I need to raise? How much money do I need for the deposit? So a lot of people know that you need a deposit to start with, and then you need to consider how much uh, the mortgage is going to be. And then also uh, getting to know what help you can get from the government and also what the legal fees are and how much they're actually going to be. So if we just take, um, want to take simple numbers, um, not to say you're going to definitely find a house for, for these numbers, but then we're just taking simple numbers just for the concept so it makes sense. And we're talking just about the UK here. So if you were to identify a property that you're looking to buy and the purchase price is 100,000, I'm looking at 100 because it's a simple number for the calculations. In many cases, um, for your first home, you're probably gonna get 90% loan to value. You've got banks that will give you 95%, but usually it's about 90% loan to value. Now, loan to value means how much money the bank is willing to give you towards the house that you're purchasing. So that's the loan to the value. The value is the value of the house. So the purchase price, like we said, is 100,000. So that's the value. So if they're looking to give you 90% loan to value, that means they're looking to give you 90,000 towards that house that, that, that actually costs 100. So you need to raise a deposit of 10%, which is 10,000. So that's the first thing you need to consider. However, that's not the full story because as you do that, you need a mortgage broker who's going to sort things out for you. You're going to need a solicitor who's going to do the legal stuff for you. So there's an element of the legal cost. And then you're also going to need to consider the stamp duty. So these other costs are things that you need to consider on top of the purchase price. So when we say you need to raise 10% of the, of the value of the property, yes, that's 10000 just for the purchase. But you're going to need to put a stamp duty on top of that and the legal fees on top of that as well. And all of that is dependent on 
who exactly you work with in terms of what solicitors they are and how much they're going to cost. It's around a thousand pounds for in, in most cases. You can get it for less. You can get some that will, will charge you a little bit more. And you also need to be uh, talking to your mortgage advisor or mortgage broker. There's some mortgage brokers that will charge the lender, not you. And some mortgage broker will just ch charge you. But the fee usually is about three to 500 pounds and you can get slightly variations on, on those fees. But those are the costs that you need to consider um, on top of actually purchasing the, pro uh, purchasing the property. And the other question was to do with the government support. Um, the government does support first time buyers and, and we're only talking about buying your first home here. The government does support first time buyers with certain, with certain schemes like the, the, the help to buy, which is, um, purely designed for the new builds, however. So they will give you a percentage of how much you actually raise, and it's for a certain period of time, and after that period of time, it's usually about five years, after that period of time, you'll, get, you'll then start getting charged an interest. So they will pay a certain amount towards um, buying the house, which means you need to raise an even lower deposit. All of that assessment, you will need to speak to your broker, you need to speak, speak to a mortgage advisor so that they can assess what they can help you with and what the numbers actually look like. But yes, the answer is yes, the government can support first time buyers by reducing the amount of money that you need to raise. What they need to do is to increase the numbers of people that are getting onto the property ladder. So they will actually assist with that. It's worth finding out. Speak to mortgage brokers. I would say speak to at least three of them so you can verify uh, the numbers and also compare prices in terms of what they're looking to charge you. So you can get a bit of a balance and get the best of, of what you potentially can. So that's, the, that, that's sort of like the ballpark figure of what you need to think about when you're looking to purchase your property. And um, if you're going to be looking at a certain house or a certain area and the numbers in terms of the purchase price, uh, once you get to know them, this is, this is how you then assess what you need to raise or how much you need to raise um in in terms of the deposit now i hope that is sort of like clear and um, understandable and if that's generated more questions feel free to ask and this is to the guys that are already on the call and if you're not on the call feel free to get in touch to ask any more uh, questions about it so any questions from anyone on the call super now, I had a feeling that the guys on the call would actually find this as uh, common knowledge um, and it, it might not be too useful to you guys. Now, I'm going to ask if memory is uh, back yet. Memory is still muted or maybe she's not back yet. Is there anyone here who's already purchased their first home who may want to just talk through their own process of how they did it? Uh, to be honest with you, Mosey, I purchased my first home about 13 years ago and I uh, can't really remember or can't really follow the, the whole process. All I remember is the deposit was too much. <laughs> 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 That's all I remember paying all of my savings to us. <laughs> Uh, no, that's okay. That's okay. I don't think the processes have changed too much from 13 years ago, but I um, uh, appreciate you telling us that. Yeah, 13, I, I, I purchased mine about 2000 and, 2006. Ooh, uh, that's how many years now? About 14 years. Yeah, about 14 years. But, you know, the, pro the process was a bit different because I those were the days we, when we were using Zimbabwean brokers. Those guys, Anna, Mazoro, Zenana, the one in Birmingham, I, I forgot. I've, I've, uh, ah, okay. There are those ones. <laughs> so it was, it was um, a bit different because they would just say, you know, the house that you have, how much do you have? Then you say what you have. 
if you afford it or you, or you don't afford it, if you want it, they will just make it that you can, you can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people bought houses those days and almost a third or half of the people lost their houses because they couldn't keep up with the payments. Mm. Especially those ones who bought in London. Uh, a lot of people couldn't keep up with the payments. So, yeah, it was like when I bought mine, well, I was a support worker working for NHSP. And they sorted everything. And I got mine, four bedrooms, a lounge, a kitchen, a dining, a garage, eight rooms all in all, which I could... I, I I don't think I would have bought it, but yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah, so it's quite it's quite different. But then you had to pay the solicitor's fee, the uh, survey fees, and all the you know all the little the little money that least that seem like little money, but if you put them together, it's big money. Oh, adds and up. Then, yeah, and then stamp duty, and what else? Yeah, then signing the contract. Okay, it it, it sounds like there was a a different way of getting it done if if you had someone else actually setting it up for you. Well, honestly, honestly, if I had if I had the mind that I had today, I think I would have just bought loads of them. Mm -hmm. But well, <laughs> the time is gone. There's, it's there, another there's, time, another era, yeah. There's a saying in, in property that the best time to buy a house was yesterday. The next best is today. Yeah. So uh, don't worry about the ones that you missed. If you can purchase the next one, just purchase it. I hope to do so. Failure <laughs> will help me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 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 yes, um, and this group is really helpful and so informative. Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 very true. It changes the mentality from uh, just thinking of buying a home to live in, and uh, bringing you buying to start house. thinking uh, investing wise, mm -hmm. which, yeah. is, which are two different things. Yeah, even mm -hmm. buying buying a home and buying a house. There, it's it's a it's a bit different. A home to live in, yeah, and a yeah, a home in the house. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. This this group is only successful based on you guys actually coming over. So we really appreciate it. No, we 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 thank you, Muzi, for bringing the group, and I mean recruiting your own people, the people that you recruited. You, you know, when 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 you when you did this, you actually knew that if I if I I add this one on the group and add that one on the group, there are people who are able to help others, and the these ones are talkative. They make the group <laughs> go really like you know a bit interesting. Tell <laughs> you the talkative one. Uh, not me, I'm very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, memory, are you back? Memory is still muted. Okay. So the second, the second half of, um, the second part of what we wanted to talk about, we'll just quickly go through that as well uh, whilst we wait for memory to get back. So we've spoken about what to, what to consider when you're actually purchasing your property. And, and these are sort of like the highlights. And thank you, thank you guys for highlighting how you guys purchased yours back in the day. And the process is not too far off, but it's, it's clear that the purchase price and um, the deposit aren't the only things that you need to consider when it comes to paying. Obviously, you need to consider some other fees that will come on top of that. Consider them as well, especially if you've saved up certain amount of money and you think that's all you need. It's surprising how many people actually go in thinking, okay, I need 10 grand 
for my deposit and 10 grand is all they have. And once they go into the process, they realize they need to pay stamp duty, they need to pay the solicitors, they need to pay the mortgage brokers. And they didn't know that. And then they have to struggle to find that extra money. So it's important to understand that fuller picture so you know exactly what you're going into. The next part... Not, not, not forgetting moving. They need to move from where they are to the other, to the other, to the other place that comes with a charge as well. Absolutely. There's a cost to that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really important to, to have that in mind. And um, thank you for pointing that out, Pelagia. That's really good. So, Muzi, just uh, something that came across recently. Uh, my, um, so I, I, I also remember the days of uh, purchasing the properties through dodgy dealings back in early 2000s. Uh, but something that's more recent for me is that they almost certainly also want you to prove where your deposit is coming from. Yeah. So, just thought I'd mention that as well. That it can't just be, okay, I've got the deposit, but they want you to prove where it's come from. Exactly. Exactly. Now, that's a very good point that you've just raised there, Ben. Thanks for joining us, by the way. So, um, as, as part of their due diligence, the mortgage brokers will be looking at, um, it's partly to do with anti-money laundering, um, uh, their, their supervision from HMRC. It's one of the main laws that they are, or regulations that they put through that if there's any big chunks of money that is being transferred for any transaction, whether it's a house or anything like that, there needs to be a trace of where the money is coming from. If it's your savings, your bank account will show that these are savings. You're paying, you're getting paid this amount, you're saving this amount, you've been doing it for the past X amount of years. That's a very simple one. But if there's a huge payment that's just landed in your account just two weeks ago and yet you've never ever had money and all of a sudden you've got 20 grand you're going to need to explain that so this is mainly to do with anti-money laundering supervision so that's a very good point there ben thank you very much okay okay so the the second part to to this conversation um to do with purchasing your first home so there's a few of you guys that uh, i have spoken to already um, to do with buying your house and the question i was asking back to people who are saying i'm ready to buy my first house i'm ready to buy my first house is what do you need to consider once you actually say you're ready to buy your first house what are the things that you need to consider so why are you actually buying this house and um, because, because firstly, I'm speaking to majority of Zimbabweans and we have the similar background, the similar bringing up, and there's a concept of um, ownership that we really want. And on top of ownership, it's also the concept of not being in debt. So we are so scared of being in debt. It, it's, it's like a sin. We try by all means not to be in debt. So the idea of pay off your mortgage as quickly as possible is one of the things that we want to do. If you've got your car on, on finance, pay off as quickly as possible so you own it. And that concept is not necessarily the best way to look at things. So the question that you need to be asking yourself is why are you looking to buy the house? So there are quite a few advantages of obviously buying your own home. It helps with your credit assessments. So in terms of getting a loan or anything that you might need, if you're a homeowner, you've got better chances of being able to get it. You've got guarantor powers. If you're gonna be, I don't know, running a, a rent to rent business and you want to be a guarantor, it helps if you're a homeowner because they look at that as a big asset that they can hold you uh, to. Um, you, 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 you're paying towards your own mortgage. So this is something I hear quite a lot because I, I don't want to be renting anyone's house because I'm paying someone else's mortgage. So I guess it is one of the advantages to be thinking, okay, so um, I'm no longer paying towards someone else's mortgage. So I'm going to be paying towards my own. That's another advantage. Um, the capital appreciation. That's another thing. Obviously, once you've purchased the property, you're paying down your mortgage and also the price of that property is going up. So you actually get the chance later on to be able to pull the equity out. So 
for for those who don't understand is that equity is the difference between how much your mortgage is and and the value of your property so at the time that you buy the house it's a hundred thousand and you buy it for the 90 so to speak of the loan to value that we spoke about before so you owe the bank 90,000 but the house is worth 100 so your equity is 10,000 which is what you actually paid initially so as you pay that mortgage down and the price of the house is going up the equity gets bigger and bigger however that can also go the other way the value of that property can actually go underneath how much you owe the bank and your equity is is negative then at that point, we call it negative equity, mm. which means even if you were to sell the house at that point for its value, you're gonna still need to fork out some more money to pay back the loan that you actually owe the bank. So equity is an advantage only if the value of the property is far higher than how much you owe the bank. So that's another advantage of being able to own your own house because the money is within the house. However, this is not money that you can just use at any point. It's good to know that my property is worth 100. I owe my bank 60. So there's an equity of about 40 grand, but you'd have to pull it out. And there's costs to pulling that, those funds out as well. So it's another advantage. However, the biggest thing that many people actually buy their first house, um, the biggest reason is the feeling of owning something. And um, I might sound controversial when it comes to this, but that feeling of ownership, ownership is, is overrated. Now, there's no point in saying this is mine, I own it, if it's costing you so much more, if it's hurting you financially, there's no point in, in, in bragging about owning something that is, is financially damaging. So even a house can actually be a serious liability. People have the misconception that because you own a house, it's a major asset. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So if that house is taking money out of your pocket, believe it or not, it's actually liability. So there's a few things that you need to be considering. So don't get me wrong. If you decide that you want to buy your house and you've saved up X amount of money, and you're ready to buy that property, that's good because you're actually better than a lot of people who are not even considering being um, on the property ladder at all. That is far much better than many of them that are not considering it. However, it's important to look at an even bigger picture of I've raised this amount of money. Is it wise to then actually put it into this property, which is actually gonna hurt me financially because you need to look at the numbers how much are you going to be paying per month and how long is it going to be before you actually see anything come back from this house or if you're ever going to see anything come back from this house. So what I was, uh, I was talking to these guys about is the fact that if you can think of it slightly differently to say, I've raised this amount of money, would it be better then to actually put it into an investment the investments that will actually pay me on a monthly basis. So I'm just going to use an example. There's, there's loads of investments that you can consider, by the way. Property isn't the only one. So there's loads of investments, stocks, bonds, uh, forex, blah, blah, blah. I can only talk about property because I'm a property guy. So if you take, for example, a rent-to-rent -rent deal that can give you at least £500 a month, that's, that's actually very achievable. Pick up an HMO somewhere in the West Midlands that can generate you £500 a month you put money into that kind of deal and then it pays you 500 pound a month for however long you have that deal for. If you then decide, okay, now that 500 pounds is paid back all the deposit that I had, it's come back and then you actually purchase a property, that property doesn't actually cost you as much as you would have before without that investment because most of that money is being paid by your investment. And that's a slightly different way of actually looking at it. To make it even better is you get that investment that gives you 500 and if it's proven to work, you get another one that will give you 500 and that will be a thousand as well. Now, if you've got investments that's giving you a thousand pounds a month whilst you're still working and then it pays back the deposit that you had initially and then you purchase the property, now you actually live in a property for free because those investments are actually paying for it. And the good thing about those investments is they will just continue paying for you as long as you actually keep them running. So it's not to say buying your property with the deposit that you have is a bad thing. 
It's just that it's good to have that other side of it. So you look at it in, in a broader aspect and actually think of what is it that I actually want to do? You might decide, you know what? I don't want to be involved in this whole property business. I just want to buy my house and live in it. If it means it's going to hurt me financially for a while, so be it. Then great. Like I said, it actually puts you in a better position than many people who would have actually not even thought about being on the property ladder, who would happily just rent for the rest of their lives. Now, it's a slightly different way of thinking about it, but it's something that is worth considering. So this is something that I was pointing out to the few people that I was talking about in the past couple of weeks. And I thought it's something that is worth actually bringing onto this platform and just sort of discussing it. Now, I'd be interested to knowing if anyone has got a different opinion or anything to add or anything to ask about that on the call. Uh, hi, Muzi, can you hear me? I can indeed, Sabo. Now, um, I 100% agree with what, uh, what you've said. And uh, yeah, there is actually a stigma about renting. And uh, yeah, actually renting is, is good at the same time if you if you know what you're doing, you know. So uh, we, we rent here in Glasgow, although we've got our property in Birmingham. Uh, so there was no point like having two homes, uh, buying another one in Glasgow. So we just decided to rent. So. Uh, so that Birmingham house uh, pays for the Glasgow house. So if you look at it, you say you're living for free, you know. So uh, other than putting money or buying your other second home, you can put the money into investments, as you mentioned. So well, what what you said is 100% true, mate. And uh, I totally agree with you. Brilliant. Absolutely awesome. So yes, um, Tabo and Google are the example of what it is that we're speaking about. Thanks for actually pointing that out. And um, it, 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 it is a very good concept. And like I said at the start, speaking from my own experience, being a Zimbabwean, it's, it's something that we seem to be taught in, our, in, in, in a cultural way, so to speak, that you have to own everything. <coughs> but owning things is a bit overrated. Um, I think it's one of the Rockefellers that said famously that um, uh, control everything and own nothing. And that's the concept that is being used by the likes of Airbnb, the likes of Uber. Um, Uber, the greatest transport sort of like company, but they don't own one car. Airbnb are the greatest accommodation company, but they don't even own one house. But they generate a ridiculous amount of cash flow. And um, don't get me wrong, owning something still does feel good, but it's not worth feeling good if it's going to hurt you financially. So it's good to let investments then pay for something that you want to own. And I think it's something worth considering. At the same time, I'm still not saying purchasing a property is a bad idea. I'm just saying it's worth thinking about the broader aspect and question yourself on why you are doing it. Why are you buying this house? Why exactly are you buying this house? And then consider what the financial implications are of buying that house. Is it worth fee, uh, having the financial complications just so you can feel good or just so you can sell, tell your friends and family that you own a house? Um, I don't think so. Um, however, if it's something that you can actually get someone else, i.e. tenants, to pay for, and then you can own it or even if you don't own it and still rent a property and actually live in that property for free because your investments are paying for it i think that gives you a much better feeling um it's it's just worth considering worth considering so um yes tabo thank you very much for sharing that has anyone else got anything to add in turn uh on that topic Yeah, stop trying to be like Jones. <laughs> Jones that lives down the road, you know. Exactly, exactly. That's another concept, Ben. Very good point. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a crazy concept, but you'll be surprised how many people do. Absolutely. 
Awesome. Um, mind opening. Thanks, Belly. Now, is, is memory back? I'm going to keep asking for memory. Memory is probably escaped now. <laughs> memory is here now. I'm Yay, sorry. Memory is back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, just... Benjamin. We've been waiting. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. I was just coming from the very, really same, same property. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so um, I, I, I know a lot of people now are actually really intrigued and, and, and they want to know what exactly is going on here, memory. But Memory's story is the first I've ever heard in our entire experience. Memory runs a service accommodation property and she told me a story a couple of days ago. I posted a video on Facebook about it, which I've also shared on the Zim Property Investors Facebook group and also on the WhatsApp group. So um, Memory's just going to quickly tell us what happened. I think you gave quite a detailed account, uh, Monzi. But yeah, I'll just try to summarize because it's a mm -hmm. bit of a long story. Yeah. Like what Moses said, uh, we booked our property, uh, the guest checking, it was actually booked on the 31st of August. Uh, so the guest, they checked, there were two, according to the booking. They checked in on Sunday, but there were a few things which were supposed to be like warning signs to us, but unfortunately we didn't pick that up. Uh, the first thing, this guy booked the, uh, made the booking, on her name, just his name, just his first name as Lee without a surname, of which we didn't pick on that. And the other thing, second thing, at some point he requested to check in between 11 and 12 midnight. Again, I was not suspicious. We just thought it could be the people coming to Northampton for business. So they wanted to be there for getting ready for Monday morning. So those were two things which we could sort of pick up. And another weakness is something we didn't do is to request for ID. We have been requesting for IDs, but mostly when we are sort of suspicious about the booking. But with this one, for some reason, I wasn't suspicious. Hence, we didn't request for his ID. So the guest checked in on the 27th. That was last Sunday um, in the evening. And they were meant to check out on Tuesday 11, latest 11. But unfortunately, I was a bit tired. I didn't have any bookings for the day. So I thought I still have days. My next booking was on Friday. So I thought I'll go Wednesday to check and do the clean up and bed changing, bedding changing. So that same Tuesday, for some reason, I don't normally have last booking, last uh, bookings. But for some reason, I had guests who booked for the property for the very same day. So I was asleep because I do nights and my son picked it up. So my son was trying to contact me to say, I think booking.com called him to say, uh, you have got a booking for today, like guests coming in. So then eventually my son managed to get hold of my son here, the brother, to say, do you please inform mom that there's some people coming in in like an hour. So, so we're sort of rushing. Everyone else was just coming with me to go and do the cleanup and sort out the house. We got there. Straight, I was looking for the keys from the safe. There was no keys. So we're like asking each other whether this guest had taken the keys with them. So I think he could hear that there were people outside. So he came to the window and he started shouting, just five minutes, five minutes, my friend is coming to pick me up. Just give me five minutes. He didn't open the door, but it was talking through the window. And it was very brief, such that even if I meet this guy, I don't even, I won't recognize him. So we started to try to reason with him to say, come on, just open the door, we'll be upstairs, we'll start from upstairs to clean whilst you're waiting for your friend. But again, he didn't want to open the door. Then at some point he mentioned that he couldn't find the keys to open the door. So it became a bit suspicious and I was like, you can still open the door from inside without keys. And then a few minutes after he said, I've called the police, the police are coming. The police are on their way. So we're still out there. Then the police turned up, one police officer came and the police, I had a chat with the police. Then they went in to speak to, to him. So they spoke to him, but I'm not sure of exactly what 
he told the police, even when he called the police, whether he lied that we were threatening him or whatever it is, I don't know. So the police, they came out of the house. Me and my son were just waiting outside now. We are like strangers. <laughs> 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 so the police, they went in and they spoke to this guy only to come out holding a long-term tenants agreement, which they said to me, apparently this guy is saying that uh, you've signed this uh, tenants agreement with him. Uh, you met him last week and you agreed with this agreement, so you can't just check him out of the house like that. So I'm trying to explain to the police and they were like, unfortunately, there's this contract and there's nothing much we can do. Then now it becomes a civil matter. You have to engage a solicitor and it has to go via the civil courts for you to try and get rid of this guy. And they'd actually asked him whether he was going to use the three bedroom house on his own. And he said, oh my, more people are coming, more people are coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the other police officer arrived after. And again, they went into the house, spoke to this guy, and they sort of maintained the same, that the guy had a contract and there's nothing they could help with. I tried to say to them, you guys, this is not my signature, this is fraud. So what are you saying to this? But you know, they were not even getting me. They insisted that uh, the only way was for me to actually call the Citizen Advice Bureau for advice, then I'll see. And even the other police officer was giving me an example that she, she had a problem herself with the tenant. That was a bit of a different story, but she ended up in the courts, but it took about four months. Wow. So, after that, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe I was just a week and there was other guests, they end up turning up, five guests turned up at the house and two police officers, they are parked. But those ones were very understanding. And I think, I thank God they actually saw the police of the, the cars there. Eh? Because they actually, they, they didn't kick it fast. They were like, okay, that's fine. We'll sort it out with booking.com and they just went. <laughs> so after everything else, at that point in time, there's nothing much I could do. My husband was not there at the time. So the police officer there to give me a lift because I didn't have a car. My husband had drove me and he had went, gone to pick a relative to come and help us out. So he was not at home. So the, the police officer, they actually happy to give us a lift home. So they dropped us at home. <laughs> <laughs> we left the guy in the house. So I actually requested for that tenant's um, agreement. And the police said, no, it's not yours. It is copy. You will give it back to him. <laughs> Uh, so uh, they just agreed for us to take the photos, the copies, yeah. And even the keys were like, uh, they have extra keys. Can we please have another key? And the police officers, they said they couldn't do that. They couldn't take the keys off him. So in the end, we got here. So we, that's when I contacted Muse. I contacted a few friends. Uh, some were just suggesting that you need to walk into the police station. To be honest, you don't leave this guy for long. Otherwise, it was going to be difficult to, you know, to get rid of him. Mm. So I had to go again to the police station with my husband and we got there and they'd closed. We were sort of buzzing, but now my husband was sort of angry. So he just lost it, to be honest. <laughs> so he called 999 direct and uh, he had to make threats. So the police, they were in the police station inside and we were outside and they were not coming in and this uh, phone was just ringing. But when he started making threats within two seconds, they were out because he was telling them that we were outside the police station. So they were out, so they were trying to reason, but my husband was just mad at them and didn't even listen to them. But again, they were maintaining that it has to go through civil courts they were maintaining, they went in and discussed, conducted the guys who had attended our house earlier on, and they were in agreement that it has to be via the courts. Then uh, as much as at some point I was saying to them, okay, I don't care about the house. What about this fraudulent activity, which has happened for someone to sign my signature and this document and putting my name 
okay, I am a victim now. I've come to report to you. I want you to open a docket. For me, forget about him and being in the house. Yeah, because this is, you know, this is fraud. Mm. But still, they were maintaining, and this lady at some point was saying that, oh, this type of business, you guys, you got into this type of business, knowing that these are the risks which come to the business. And at some point, was just saying that, oh, it's not us who deals with this uh, fraud. There's actually a special department. I said, give me the conduct of that department. I need help because I can't just sit down and watch all this rubbish. And I don't have money to pay mortgage six months going through the courts and uh, this guy is just staying in the house, not paying and everything. So it went on for a while, such that they said we are going round and round in circles and now they were saying to my husband, you don't have to make this threat, we take this threat. Both my husband was saying that I'm going back to my house and I'm gonna be in my house and sleeping in my house because it is my house. And what's gonna happen between me and this guy, whether we're gonna sleep both of us in the house, we'll see, but <laughs> I'm going back to my house. So they were like, you're yeah, making serious threats, this is serious threats, hey, we are recording this and all that. And I was like, you go ahead and record. We have come to the police for you to help us and they're failing to help us. So if anything happens, it's up to you. So anyway, they maintained that, oh, you guys, memory, because me, I was the one who was sort of calm. Patrick was not prepared to listen to whatever they were saying. So I was like, oh, I'll advise you tomorrow to go to the citizen advice bureau, gather all the evidence and go. Unfortunately, we can't help you. And anyway, in the end, we said, okay, that's fine. So we're on our way back home. And we're just thinking what we're we going to do. And I was thinking of just printing and gathering all the evidence, like what Moose had said um our past bookings future bookings and everything else so whilst we are on our way back home then i received a call again from the police saying that memo are you okay for us to come and speak to you are you at home then i was like why is it you want to talk to me now is it because patrick has been threatening to kill this man or why what why is it you want to talk to me about and they were like oh about the whole issue we just want to talk to you about the whole issue i said okay i'm going to work now I have to go, I'm late actually, but I'll be going to work. They were like, oh, we'll come and see you, even at work. So anyway, I, I told them. So they said they were coming to my workplace. And I said, what time? They said they were not sure because they were very busy. Uh, when we got home, as I was changing, I'd gain another phone call. Where are you? We are on our way to your workplace. But they'd said that they were very busy. But no, I didn't understand the agents of the matter now. They said yeah, they were on, um, on their way to my workplace. I said 30 to 45 minutes. I got to my workplace. I met the police, uh, two police officers. Now they were prepared to take a statement. So they took the statement. As they were taking a statement, they'd send two other police officers to the house. Whether they thought Patrick was going to go there and cause problems, or uh, they decided they discussed and felt that there was a case, I'm not sure. But two police officers were sent again at the same time. So as they were talking to me, even now they were saying, oh, I think this guy is crazy. I said, now you, you can, yeah, saying that he's crazy, but anyway, only we're not even listening to us. Yeah. So anyway, they took statement and everything else. Whilst the police were still there with me, then they said, oh, the police officers at the house, they, they've got your keys. Do you want them to go home and give them to Patrick? And, and I said, is the guy out of the house? They said, yes. So I said, okay, so what did he say to the police now? They've managed to sort of uh, get rid of him. And they were like, we are not sure because they haven't interviewed him. So I am not sure whether at that point in time this guy was arrested or they just let him go or whatever. I'm not quite clear with that. But then I started challenging the police to say, what has actually triggered you now? to run around, where is the agency coming from? Because earlier on, you were trying to say there's no issue, there's mm -hmm. nothing you could do, but now it's like, it's everything is agent, agent, why? And they said, mm -hmm. oh, we could see. Now they were trying to blame their colleagues, that all the, our colleagues, I think they failed to differentiate what is civil and what is not civil. And now they were trying to say, but initially they were in agreement, but now they're just trying to blame the, their colleagues. And they said, we, we could see the passion in you and Patrick when you were talking about this issue. <laughs> so we thought we need to revisit. So we revisited and we discussed with the, our surgeon. So we thought we have to look into this case again. 
So that's how this guy ended up out. So on Monday, because I didn't hear anything from the police, when is the Thursday, I tried to call the same mobile number with the other police officer was calling me on, but I couldn't get hold of him. Then yesterday, uh, they sent an email on Patrick is saying that they're going to interview the guy today. So they wanted me to confirm, because there's an address which is on that um, tenant's agreement, which he was claiming that that was my address. So <laughs> they wanted me to confirm whether I've got anything to do with this address, whether I own this property, whether I've lived at this address, or I've got any connections with that address, which I don't have. I've never lived there. I don't know anyone who lives at this, at this address. And they wanted me to send my ID with my signature, which I did. So we, we sent that yesterday evening. So we are just waiting to hear from the police now what's going to happen. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully I'll manage to get some more information about the whole thing. So that's my issue. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. <laughs> Yeah, you should you should be made to pay the loss of the loss of income you were supposed to get from the the other guests he disrupted. Well, when they were taking the statement, the police officer actually stated that and how much the booking was for. She actually put all that in the statement. But whether you'll be able to pay or not, or what sort of a person I'm actually dealing with, I don't know. But they did put all that into the statement. Can I can I ask a can I ask a personal question? Did did this guest book direct uh, on your website, or did they book through uh, a search a searching engine? They booked through Booking.com. Really? And then when we called Booking.com, they were not helpful at all. And then because I, I thought know. because I didn't have information, like I've said that it was only first name, which is not even his name. But I was trying to gather more information, like say name or whatever. They didn't manage to give me any information. I'm not sure whether they were going to disclose like the card information to the police, but um, to me, they didn't. They were actually advising me to call the police. Call the police. I said the police are not doing anything. They said it's a civil matter. So they were continuing repeatedly stating that call the police. You need to call the police. So they were not all that helpful. So how how did it how did it go from booking? from booking uh, through booking.com to signing a contract that, that's very stupid because it's a fake contract so that's what i was saying to the police that according to the contract is stating from the tw starting from the 27th of september this year until the 27th of september next year uh, uh, so, that's what, so that's what i was saying to the <laughs> That's what I was saying to the police. How can I be stupid? One, even your colleagues, they saw my the guests who were turned away. How can I continue to take bookings whilst I know that, you know, I'm in agreement with someone, a one-year attendance agreement with someone else. <laughs> and again, what was the rationale for him to book for two days from the 27th, yet his tenant agreement is starting on the 27th? Yeah, then, then, then if somebody signs an agreement, there is, there is payment to be made. You should have showed the, 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 the police um, the proof of payment. He told the police that he paid 1000 in deposit for the house and 800 rent uh, via cash by Pay. cash. <laughs> I want to oh, ask people, people, people are so ruthless, people are so evil. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I've got a question that I just want to clear my mind. Is the is the the customer, the client, white, black, Asian? The customer, because like I said, I saw this man very briefly initially when he mm. opened the curtain. Mm. The rest of the conversation, he was in the house. He didn't even open the curtain. But he sounds mm. like sort of Asian or EU. Like Romanian, Bulgaria, I think. Oh, All those there. ones. Those ones, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, I okay. Think so the so so you've, got, you've got a self-checking service. I've got a self-checking service, yes. Oh, okay. I think it was very unprofessional for the police to say you got into the business knowing the, the, the risks or the consequences. Exactly. Ah, it's, so it's, 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 it's instead of like mocking. Because... 
And because it, it, I think the best way was to say uh, it is a civil matter, you need to go and sign post you and explain how you go about it. Because people go to different services without knowing. Yes, but exactly. saying uh, you got into this business knowing the risks, I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. I think yeah. that's why they are running around now. They yeah, want it, to cover up the it, mess that they caused that day because they could have handled the situation the very same day, the very same time. Exactly. Yeah, if you know, if even if you, even if you know, if you, even if you get into the business knowing the risks, but if something happens, they have yeah. to do their job full stop. Exactly. Yeah, Someone went, went to a pub and got drunk and got into a fight, and then the police would say, "Yeah, you, 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 you went to a pub and drunk and got into a fight." You know, being intoxicated. It, it's not a professional statement. No, it 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 is not. Even uh, uh, again, I've got few people who sort of advising me to which I complain about the yeah, police, but it's something that I don't have time to to pursue these things. I think you should. Mm. I could have actually put a complaint, mm. and I think they could realize yeah. because we we made it very clear. And if you want, live. and if you want to be, if you want to be nasty, just go in and say just because I'm black, uh, you yeah. make the you, you need you to make, make a statement because they learn from it anyway. Yeah, that's why that's where it all coming from. Because if it was a white person, they would have dealt with that and person friendly. That very yeah. same moment. I remember me. I remember me saying to police one day, it wasn't it wasn't a, a, a property issue or anything but i ended up to saying you know what you guys if i was a white woman who goes f f in this and f in that and f in that you would have dealt with me completely different because we black people we are very calm by nature we 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 mind what we talk we think first before we 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 say something now we are taking an, an advantage because, oh, I because, I am, because I am nice, do you want me to start saying those F words? Oh, no, ma'am, they, they change. And they said, you, you, you treat people different, differently. No, we don't. And they said, yes, you do. I think you need also yeah, need to go the, the signature and the details that he, that he gave, he, the, that he used on the contract, on the whatever, the, the tenants agreement that he forged. I think you need to pursue that because it's, yeah. a, it's a very serious crime. It is. It is memory. Important. Yeah, that's that's ha. my main one. That that's actually my main one because even when we are arguing with them at the police station, I said, okay, forget about the house, forget about the house. At the moment, what about this fraudulent activity? What about signing, pretending that is my signature? I'm telling you, it's not my signature. And now with this criminal called you first and you are listening to him because he's the one who was the first to call i am here to make a case now to report this fraudulent activity which has happened but now still they were not actually interested in that part but now as far as i'm concerned that is what they're trying to look into a memory yeah. memory sorry this is um this is elistas right Yes, that's yes, really yes. I'm, I'm, I've, I've just muted a few of you guys just so we can have one person talking at a time. Sorry, guys. So, Feli, you've got a question. Um, I just wanted to say to memory, you've handled this very professionally and well done. Uh, was thinking outside the box and think that you should use this as an opportunity for publicity, and you could contact people like LBC or any any of your local what's it called producers newspaper or something like that because i think police have got learning lessons to to have here they, they would want to learn from from your from your story uh other sa providers as well would like to learn from your story and at the same time you'll be advertising your business that's all i wanted to say that's a what fair point Oh, sorry, memory. Did you ask a question? I was asking, what is LBC? Oh, London, Brook, London largest broadcasting corporation. I'll, okay, I'll send you the link. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. If, if you could send that link over on the group and then memory can pick it up from there, I think it'll be good for other people to know as well. Yeah. They, 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 might, they might be interested in this story or even just your local newspaper. Use it for publicity. Use it for, for getting yourself known. 
Okay, all right. Thank you. That's a very good and, point, and, really. Thank you. Of course, the other thing, like we said, that, that uh, we we sort of, but at times I would just imagine if my husband wasn't there, that what was going to happen, because I think he's the one, the, his threats to them, I, I think he played a role, because now they were sort of worried that what's going to happen. But if it was only me as a female, I don't know whether I was going to have that punch, because um, even I was trying to say to my husband, no, you don't have to say those things, but I think it actually helped in a way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a few things to consider whether it was actually something that would have worked or not or anything like that. So I'm going to ask the questions on, on the guy's behalf. And if you've got any questions that you want to ask, feel free to raise your hand. I can see you, Dinewa. I'm just going to go through the questions that have been asked by uh, Ben first. So memory, this is for you, I believe. Um, do, do you ask for an ID on your check-in? Or the ID for checking. Yeah. I think I've said it at the beginning that unfortunately we didn't ask for ID. Like uh -huh. I said, that normally when we are suspicious with a booking, that's when I normally request for IDs. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. this time I think it's going to be a must. It's, yeah. it's a must because I had Dave and uh, guest who checked in on Friday. They were actually delaying to send me the IDs and I made it clear to them that I wasn't going to, they were not going to have access to the house without a, a IDs. Yeah, no, that's and I think with I think with the with the questions that are being asked here, um, remember this is this is no sort of like judgment towards you. This is just a learning curve for everyone else. So any of the questions that the guys are asking is just so we can help each other at the end of the day. But um, there's a lot of um, there's a huge learning, uh, huge learning for the police as well and as well as um, us as SA operators, things that we can use to, to, um, to improve. Like you said, the major positive is there was no damage to the property. You've got the property back. Uh, we need to pick out what's good and what's bad about the whole process and learn from it. So the next thing was, um, so Ben said, uh, well done for working through this calmly to resolve it. Uh, the civil route would have been a nightmare. It took Ben seven months to evict a tenant. So that, that could have been an absolute nightmare. Too much of a, of a loss. So Felistus, thank you very much. You sent a link on the chat. If you want to have a look at that, uh, pick it up and use that information. Thank you very much. Um, if someone could pick up that link and also put it on the WhatsApp group as well, because once this call is finished, we won't see it. Um, so even if I had, I could not go back into the property. Yeah, uh, I can see Dinua is asked to uh, to she she wants to ask a question. So well, I just want to add one or two things that I feel might be helpful. Like when you pursue this thing about the police, I think it's important to mention that the police believed this person. They did. And yeah. the second thing is that you're not doing it just for you, but for other people as well who might fall victims <laughs> of this person because no one knows what he is up to. I think those two statements, if you add them into whatever you're going to say or write a memory, I think that would be very helpful and that would be an eye opener to the police and all whoever will be investigating the case. That's all I wanted to say. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's true. Even I pointed that out to the police officers because I said the police of officers who arrived first, they actually believed this criminal. And at some point, I maintained that the, the law was actually protecting a criminal. I told them the law was protecting a criminal. Mm. So, yeah, I, I understand. Thank you very much. Now, I, I can imagine so many people, not just the people on the call itself, but so many people listening into this have got so many other things to ask. And um, I think the, the summary of it, there's a lesson to learn for all parties that were involved in this, the SA operators, the police themselves, and anyone who might look to, to, to invest into this business. So um, thank you so much, Memory, for sharing your story. Now, uh, there's... Oh. The, that, that video that uh, we actually posted um, a couple of days ago to, to talk about this.
there's a lot of information that was shared in the comments for these videos that were posted in different platforms on Facebook and some really valuable feedback from people that are a lot more experienced than us. some people who have been in law before who have studied law and um, there's some really good information to to pick up from it so thank you guys for the guys that have actually responded to this as well um, it's it, it is for me anyway it's the craziest i've seen in time that someone can just walk into someone's property after booking for a couple of nights create a fake document and there you go you can stay in there according to the police absolutely crazy so thank you memory thank you guys for the support thank you so much no problem um pelagi has got something else to say memory are you are you on um um sa groups in your area for, for for example here in southampton we've got um i think two groups dema sa where we communicate and we are, we can actually warn each other um yeah i was actually warned about one zimbabwean woman who uh i need to have my activities are you know so yeah are you on that are you on that group because if if you are or if you are not go on those groups as well you might actually hear that that person here actually that game of doing it in the same area again and again and again and that that creating um uh, a document he didn't create it in two days Mm -hmm. he already knew what he wanted to do and he had the document already the date or maybe to print out already yeah because the booking was done on the 31st so he had like a month to plan and do all this yeah because he said he was waiting for his friend and then later mentioned the place so it he planned it it was planned well planned i agree with it mm. That's a good point. That's a good point. Thank you very much, Pella. And um, just to answer the question for memory, um, there is a, a, an essay group in, in our area and we are collecting more and more essay operators in it. So um, memory kindly shared, uh, memory and Patrick kindly shared all the information about this case, the name that came through booking.com to warn us all. Uh, because we were operating in the same area. So there is a group and she is part of it. So thank you very much for that question. And it's a good point for anyone who's running essays. Um, the, the, the concept of thinking other essay operators are competition. They're not competition. They're people that you want to be collaborating with because some things like these can be helpful to you if another essay operator has gone through it. Um, Pelagia has got something else. Sorry, it's an, it's it's another it's another uh, um memory. Uh, when when you happen to to get the name of that person, would you kindly if if you if say maybe if you get the picture as well, kindly put him on the group so that we all know because he might be not doing it in one one city. He might be going around the whole of Great Britain doing the same thing. Yeah, because like I said, to, like I said earlier on, that unfortunately, according to the booking, this guy booked the property under the name Lee, mm -hmm. which is not actually his name. I think on the um, there's a different name on the tenants agreement. I'll check again the name, but there's a different like Asian sort of Asian name. Okay. But we are not sure yet whether it's actually his real name. Mm -hmm. And I'm just hoping the police at some point will be able to actually disclose uh, the actual name of this the identity of this guy because that was my other issue with the police because i wanted to know exactly who who he is uh, okay thanks i, I think <laughs> 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 yeah i don't if he's a criminal he won't be using the same name anyway it wouldn't surprise me if the name he used when booking is different from the name that he was in that agreement. <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I think there's, there's, there's quite a lot to think about coming from um, 
this conversation. So it's it's a major, major learning for, for all of us. To those who have actually watched this video all the way to the end, I'm sure you've learned something and there's something that is worth thinking about. But do not let this scare you away from running an SA business. This is just a small percentage of what happens um, in, in, in uh, service accommodation. It is a lucrative business once it's done right, but you do have these things that come through. So, however, do not let that scare you away. It's a small percentage of it, even if it's really inconveniencing when it does happen. So, We've come to, to the end of our meeting. I know there's a lot more things that people would want to ask and talk about, especially about that case alone, but uh, we're going to have to come to an end and, um, and, and just continue this conversation maybe on the WhatsApp group or on Facebook for anyone else who may have any further questions or anyone else who's experienced something similar and has an opinion on how to handle it going forward. Please, please, please share information. That's the whole concept of this group so that we can help each other go through these, uh, these challenges. So thank you very much to the guys that are on the call. Thank you very much for the guys that are watching this. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe these videos and share them with anyone who might find them useful. That would be really, really appreciated. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next week. So next week, guys, next week we have a speaker. We have a speaker. Majority of you guys have been asking about the finance side of property. So we have someone who's going to be talking to us about how to clean up your credit rating. This is something that a lot of people really want to know about. We have someone who's going to talk to us about how to clean up your credit rating. Someone in the finance industry and she is absolutely amazing you don't want to miss miss this guys we're going to be sharing more information about it on the groups so you know exactly what time it's going to be exactly who it's going to be it's going to be on a sunday at 5 30 uk time but you want to come and join this and learn from this lady so thank you guys for the guys who are on the call and thank you guys who are watching and we'll see you again next week thank you thank you bye, bye.